Hey guys, let's get that audio check done. I gotta know if you can hear me. I don't know. This alien technology is not very, very trustworthy. Let me see what's going on in this chat. Side clowns. Yeah. Nancy Puffins, are you telling me my audio is good? Loud and clear, Corey Hobbs. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm I'm sporting the new do. I actually got hair now. I think it's awesome. Good audio, Preston John. Thank you, Buster Johnson. All right. We'll let a few more people stack up in the chat before we get on with this presentation. Because we all know, most of us know, and if you don't know, you will by the end of this presentation. The entire ancient aliens franchise is a psyop, every bit of it. Hey, Perceiver, how you doing? Merrill Gigi, I got to send you an email. We got some business to talk about. Man, I know. I can't even drink coffee face diaper. I, I, hey, it was a real dark moment earlier today when I realized that wearing this mask is going to keep me from drinking coffee. I got through it, though. I got through it. Yeah, we've all seen the movies. We're going to talk about a few of them here. We're not going to decode movies in this. That's not what this is about. We're going to go a little bit deeper than that. Audio sounds a little alien. That's pretty good, Grateful Ed. It's supposed to be like an old radio. I'm inside of a I'm inside of a mask, Dot Tester. Of course it's muffled. I can take it off though. I can take the mask off if you guys want to hear me better. It's just an intro, waiting on a few more people to stack up in here. Thank you, Jahar Lee. I know, I kind of, I can go to the beach like this. Got me some hair. I can go strutting around. Yeah, I can do that. I don't have to be a bald Vader no more. Unchained Aaron, how you doing? Shiva Shampoo, my bro, how you doing? I got to send you an email too, Shiva. I have been getting caught up. It's finally so good to get caught up on, on so much stuff. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. You and ancient aliens have so much in common. You're both predators. Chris, Chris Topher, I'm in a good mood today, so I'm not going to block you. I'm going to let that one go because it was actually kind of clever. But don't try your luck tomorrow. We had a great time in San Diego. Had a great time coming back in Houston in the Knights of the Round Table. We, invite, we invited the public to sit in a circle with us. It was a blast. Eight hours went by so fast, talking about so many deep topics. Yeah, I love it. I love it when we get those little get-togethers like that. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I will monitor the chat a little bit. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, IV Bolt. I've heard of Metatron. I really don't know anything about him. Let's see. Guys, ancient aliens is a psyop. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. We're going to talk about it here. You can always formulate your own opinions, but you have to understand that the evidence of controlled deceit it's found in the numerous items covered, not only in this presentation, but all these, 
all these movies that Hollywood has produced, they, they have a single common denominator, a single fact, not mentioned in any movie, not mentioned in the traditions, or alleged evidence of extraterrestrial presence. Guys, it becomes really, really obvious after a while. It's like, holy shit. How can all these movies avoid this one single item? It's a dead giveaway. We're gonna, you're going to learn what that is in this, in this presentation. It's a single hidden truth that reveals what's actually going on. It's amazing, guys. It's amazing. I'm still waiting for a few people to stack up in this chat. I haven't been doing my lives like I'm supposed to. Hey, Wendy Flores, I see you peeking at me. Yeah, is it Sleepy Joe? Oh, y'all know it's me. You can't hide that. You know it's me. You see? You see all this ink? You know it's me. Don't try that bullshit. Just because I'm sporting dreadlocks today. Yes, I did unslave. I did, I did go on with, with uh, Michael Tassarion for two hours. It was great talk. It was on his show called Unslaved. I'm not going to dress like David Wilcock. I'm not even going to talk to David Wilcock. There's no, there's no sense in it. There's no good that can come of that. That man knows that he's a part of a psyop. Just like my hero, my fallen hero. I can no longer endorse the man. David Hatcher Childress, I can't endorse him anymore. He has gone to the dark side. <sighs> Yeah, he's no longer he's no longer just a consultant on ancient aliens. He's now promoting ancient aliens. He's now promoting the idea. Yeah, I'm not trying to hear it no more. David had your shoulders. I still got your books, but you know what? You suck. Yeah, man, I know. Listen, I, I get it. I get it. Somebody's mentioning about wire paladin. You're talking about, listen, censorship is real. The name Archaics is, is, is centered in a lot of platforms, especially Facebook. On my own, on my own group on Facebook, Facebook censors comments trying to, trying to say that People that even comment or like or try to do a heart or a share are trying to uh, manipulate the algorithm and get more likes and get more shares. It's absolutely ridiculous. But Facebook is all about censorship. Facebook is 100% a intelligence apparatus. That's what it was designed for, 100%. That's what it's for. All right, guys. We're almost got a thousand. You can go to Archaics TV. Archaics.tv if you remember. I got a lot of, I got small hat, I got tiny hat videos and different stuff over there on, on Archaics TV. That's the Michael Desarion videos on there. All right, Muddy Waters, we're about to begin this presentation. Sierra. There is not a base behind the moon. You cannot build a construction project on a hologram. It's not going to happen. I know there's a bunch of misinfo out there that's made to look like classified documents that tell you that there is something on the moon, but there's not. Yeah, man. I'm about to hit that thousand. I see it. Thank you, Carol Felton, for preferring my face over this hideous mask. This doesn't even do Lord Darth Vader any service at all. Predators were ugly. Only thing good about a predator is a predator kills an alien. And I like that.
Yeah, man. You guys are growing up as kids. I know you watch Buck Rogers. How many of you watch Buck Rogers? How many of you actually remember the show Buck Rogers? Oh, I know some of you did. I know some of you did. We're going to transfer audio real quick. By turning this off. This ain't going to take long. That is hot. Head feels so cool. I can just put these right back on. I don't need to turn them off. All right, uh, let's redo that audio check real quick. Let me know how are you how are you hearing this? Because I can't switch over to it to a microphone. That's right, Nanny Boo Boo. Nanny Boo Boo, you're right. Biddy 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 biddy. Look, Rogers was cute. Cute. Hey, Jay Hart, how you doing? Much better sound. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these on until you guys tell me that you prefer for me to get on the microphone on the camera. If that's not if you would rather me uh, wear the headset, I'll just wear the headset. Whatever sounds better, guys. Mr. Colts, you think this is better than a mic? I'll just use it every time then. I'll just use it every time. Awesome. Thank you, Force. I'll take that into consideration. Buck Rogers, purely for entertainment. Buck Rogers was purely for entertainment, but it was also for programming. It was a really, it was a unique show. But there's a significant fact that remains unmentioned in Buck Ro Rogers. It's a, it's a situation that was totally avoided. So I find that really interesting, but it's not going to be the focus of this video. Because it's no different than another very popular show you guys remember. I know many of you remember. Some of you are sci-fi notes like I was. And you remember Battlestar Galactica. You remember the steel, the stainless steel-faced Michael Knight little red Cylon Raiders. They're in their little UFOs. Yeah, they were shaped like UFOs. So, flying discs. The same, they were shaped just like Pliny the Elder said 2,000 years ago when Rome was experiencing a whole rash of UFO activity, so much so that the very erudite and learned Pliny the Elder recorded it in his book, Natural History. He said that during the Punic Wars, there was unusual flying shields that were passing through the sky. Sometimes there was earthquakes, and it, was ha and it happened during battles. Well, while while the Carthaginians and the Romans were at war, they would look up and see these flying shields. Very interesting. It's kind of reminiscent of what we find, what we hear about World War One and World War Two with the Foo Fighters. So, I know I know you guys know what I'm talking about with Buck Rogers and Battlestar Galactica, the war against the Cylon Raiders. Listen, these were very entertaining, but at the same time, they were programming. They were programming us to make certain assumptions about extraterrestrials. And in these two shows, there isn't a hint of this fact that I'm going to reveal in this video. So, I was a fan of Battlestar Galactica, but I'm going to have to be honest. When Star Wars came out, Battlestar Galactica went out the window. I was in love with Star Wars. I was Luke Skywalker, then I was Boba Fett, and then I was Darth Vader, and then I was Lando Calrissian. I, I'm, hey, I, I was everybody in Star Wars. I had every toy. I played with every toy. And then when I fell in love with BB guns, I shot every toy until they were unrecognizable. But this is a, Star Wars is awesome. I love Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, all three movies, the original trilogy. Remember, it was a galaxy far, far away, and nowhere in those movies is there a hint of the fact of, that I'm going to reveal in this video. I love them. I do love them. Absolutely not, uh, Maria Bono. I was not Princess Le Leia. 
Nice try. Try to slip one in on me. All right. Let's see. So Star Wars, I was always a fan of. And I know the Star Wars trilogy good. I know the three movies that came after. And I know the three movies that came after that. I got them all down pat. I've watched them. Uh, even at 50 years old, I'm still a fan, even though Walt Disney has totally effed up the franchise. So when I was in prison, I even read Star Wars books. And I'm a little upset that that, that Disney has recreated that shit, but it's got nothing to do with this video. So I was rather upset, though. Gene Roddenberry, listen, I do not like Star Trek. I don't like Star Trek for several reasons. I feel it's the socialist, communist version of Star Trek. It is an amalgamation of, of Star Wars. I mean, uh, yeah, the communist version of Star Wars. If communists and socialists were to get together and come up with a whole, a whole sci-fi world and cosmos and, co and concept and all that, it would be Star Trek, 100%. Yeah, in almost every ethnicity and political association today can be identified in the alien species of Star Trek. I said, oh, yeah, okay, well, those, those are space Jews right there. Yeah, those right there are space Nordics. Those are space Aryans right there. And then every single planet they went to was some type of weird philosophical concept. Like, it was just weird. It's just I, I never liked Star Trek. Star Trek was just too, too out there for me. But I sure like Star Wars. But I will say this. I will say this. I can't recall. I can be corrected, but I can't recall anything because I, I did watch all the Star Wars episodes. I watched the '60s, and then it, then it uh, all the reruns. I watched them. Then I watched the movie Wrath of Khan. You know, I, I mean, come on. Uh, everybody's watched Star Trek, even though I didn't really like them. Star Trek: The Final Frontier. Yeah, I used to watch Jan, uh, uh, William Shatner. Star Trek: The Final Frontier. What will we find when we go there? Oh, my God. The dude is just so dramatic. And then when you watch the episode, it's like a real deal killer. It's like, damn, this sucked. But you know what? Kept coming back and watching it because nobody was producing any anything, any sci-fi stuff. But nowhere in any of the sci-fi movies or storylines is this fact that I'm going to reveal in this presentation ever found, ever seen. It's avoided like the plague. Yeah, guys. Yeah. It is, guys. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, uh, my dad is personally my my old man. My you guys have met him in the chat. You see, listen, man. My old man is personally personally responsible for traumatizing me when I was about nine nine years old. I'm gonna tell you about it because it deeply affected me the rest of my life. I can't stand arachnids. I can't stand anything with more than four legs. I am absolutely terrified of, of scorpions and spiders. But I'm going to tell you now, the movie Alien ruined me. I didn't like horror movies after that. I didn't like any of that. I was so scared. I was hiding behind. My dad was sitting there watching it. He's laughing. And I'm behind the sofa. I can't stop watching it. I'm watching Alien, but I'm hiding. I'm hiding from that TV. Alien scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Yeah, you guys know <clears throat> Sigourney Weaver, the movie Alien. Yeah, I'm taking you guys down memory lane because I'm only softening you, softening you up because we're going deep in this presentation. We haven't even scratched the surface, but I got to get you. I got. I got to put you in that in that mindset. I got to take you down memory lane so you can remember all these movies that were very. I'm giving them to you in chronological order how these presentations by Hollywood deeply affected our perception of reality. Not a hint in the movie Alien of the fact that I'm going to drop in this presentation. Another movie. Many people. I'm really, I'm, I'm really, uh, Elizabeth and Jake Sims. Thank you very much. You already know, guys. Every, every bit helps. It's all put to good use. To spread the word. Spread materials. Yeah, man. It's uh, You guys already know. Archaics ain't about greed. We, de we disable those ads so you can learn. So our, every little donation is very appreciated. They're not necessary, but they're very appreciated. Guys. 
in the mid 80s, a movie came out. Very few people remember it, but it was called Enemy Mind. Enemy Mind was a very unique concept. You know, went to a, went to a strange world, and uh, a human pilot met an enemy pilot, and they had to become friends because they crash landed on a hostile world. The enemy pilot, his anatomy was very different, androgynous. The males actually had the babies in that alien species, but everything about him was male from a from an anatomical human perspective. But he looked reptilian. In the movie Enemy Mine, we had a reptilian alien who, who befriended a human intergalactic pilot or whatever, and they were fighting each other, and they crash-landed on this hostile world, and they had to get along to survive. It's the movie Enemy Mine. Some of you might want to go back and see it. It's uh again. It also, uh, it also was a uh, Lewis Gossett Jr. movie. It was it was it's it's a movie that was specifically designed to condition and program us. It did a really good job. It's just one. These are all links in a chain. That's what they are. Not one single presentation by Hollywood alone could, could suffice. It's called grooming. This is what you do to your victim. It's very popular. It's in psychology, guys. This is what is being done to the victim. The victim is the public. The public is being groomed. And it's being groomed through a series of cinematic production, productions, each one adding more and more detail, more and more evidence in layers. It, it, this, this method of conditioning is solely for one purpose. It is to get the collective to suspend their disbelief. We're going to get to that in this presentation. Enemy mind doesn't have a hint of the fact that I'm going to drop in this video. And that's very telling that, that so many movies about space and aliens and intergalactic civilizations, so many, so many alien ET movies, this fact I'm dropping in this video isn't in any of them. They have avoided it like the plague because it's the one, it's the one fact that collapses the whole house of cards. Ancient Aliens is a psyop. Another good movie from the 80s. You guys are going to know it. This is one of my great teenage movies. I used to get in fighting spirit, get my fake M16. I'll get my camo on. I'll go to my dad's closet and go find hunting gear and put it on, get, get some sunglasses. And man, I become G.I. Joe. And I was, man, I watched this movie, The Last Starfighter, because I love video games. Man, I used to, I used to take my allowance right down the street, dump those quarters in there, and just hope that some alien civilization was watching me tear that ass up on that arcade because I knew that that arcade was being used to see who the true fighter pilots were. So, man, I chose those games, man, and, I, and the last Starfighter star ruined me. I stayed broke as a kid. I spent all of my quarters on, on that game. For those of you who remember The Last Starfighter, an epic movie. It is a movie everybody should rewatch. Awesome. From a kid's perspective, kid playing putting quarters in the machine he's getting good he's got no life he's bored he, he, there's nothing happening for him he's out way out there in the country and he just has this video game that he be, obsesses over and he plays this video game and it's and it's awesome and the next thing you know he's visited because that's not a video game that's a flight simulator for an extraterrestrial vehicle and it's a vehicle that very very few minds are qualified to pilot and these arcades are put on all these different worlds, all these different worlds everywhere, which insinuates that there's a whole bunch of worlds out there. It's another conditioning. It's, an, it's another excellent way. It's another link in the chain of Hollywood as they were, as they were laying out this whole, whole paradigm to get, the, to get the collective to suspend their disbelief. So, all right. <clears throat> And you know, too, you know, too, I ain't scared of him no more. He lost his head. But you already know Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Predators. And, hey, listen, that was a really good movie, too. As a matter of fact, I, I'm kind of partial to the Predator. I'm partial to the Predator because he kicked aliens' ass. And I'm cool with that. And uh, that's what we're about. That's what we're doing in this video, too. So 
Thank you for donating the Predator mask. You know who you are. So, anyway, that's what we're doing here, guys. Predator, Predator, Predators kill aliens. At least that's in the movies. They even had a Predator versus Alien. Then they had another movie where the Predators were going to war with the aliens. And yeah, aliens can't, the aliens can't deal with the Predators. Alien, aliens can mess a human up, get us hiding behind our couches and shit. But that's about it. Yeah, man. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, somebody somebody's talking to my dad in the chat, talking about silver dollars. I don't know what y'all are talking about, but my old man ain't got no coins no more. Because when I was a kid, I found that coin collection. I don't know what happened to it, but, but it's gone. I know it's gone. Let's see. I'm still paying him back for that one. I never heard the end of that shit. All right. Yeah, man, the Predator movie, I mean, it was awesome. But listen, these movies, they molded us. They had us believing in certain paradigms that, to, that were possible. Yeah, it wasn't hard to believe these things the way they're presented. But uh, we can go back. We can go back to like 1978. Or 1977, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I've watched it. It really opened up the public mind to the existence or the possibility of extraterrestrial civilizations here in the guise of UFOs, unidentified flying objects. In in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, yeah, they were uh, they were shown as UFOs, vehicles. Vehicles of light in the sky. I know many of you have seen that. Many of you have seen Close Encounters. I don't quote me on it. I think it's 1978, but uh, it, it was right around there somewhere. 78, 79, maybe 77, maybe I don't know. But uh, I do know this. It too, completely avoided. The movie was almost presented as a documentary, but it's it also avoided this amazing fact that's avoided in all the alien extraterrestrial movies and uh, uh, cinematic productions. It also avoided it. And um, pretty soon you guys are going to start guessing what I'm talking about. Well, we have many, we have many movies, we have many productions that were put out by Hollywood or by independent, you know, uh, independent filmmakers, indie filmmakers, do y'all remember the battle for Los Angeles, like 2010, 2011? You remember that movie, how realistic it was, how they thought, how in the beginning of the movie, the news report showed that Earth was going to hit, get hit by some asteroids and these meteorites were going to land. And then they started looking at the trajectories and they started moving and they started realizing, wait, these are moving with intelligent design. They're spreading out. They're going to specific coordinates and they were all going to land in the ocean right off the coasts of major cities. One of them was Los Angeles. The Battle for Los Angeles is a very realistic looking movie of what an alien civilization would look like if it was coming to take us over. Yeah, The Battle for Los Angeles is awesome. It's a good movie, good CGI. I mean, the only, the only special effects in CGI that I have seen that's better than the movie The Battle for Los Angeles is on the History Channel in the uh, playlist called Ancient Aliens. That's the only that's that's you know that's the only one that beat them on CGI. But uh, yeah, that movie too, that movie also avoided this amazing, basically a mic drop that I'm gonna give you in this presentation. It avoided it like the play. Independence Day 1996, we all know. We all know that's when the fresh prince of Bel Air saved humanity. By, by hijacking a UFO. He stole a UFO and then turned around and used the UFO against him. Yeah, guys, we all remember that. Fresh Prince saved the day. So that was, uh, that was 1996. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was my sixth year in prison. So I totally missed all that. I got to see the commercial field reruns years later on our old prison t television, but it was still a good movie. Now, that movie as well, 
completely avoided this fact. That was a huge movie. Did, I don't know. Did they make another one, Independence Day 2? Didn't they make a second one? I don't remember. I don't remember. I just don't remember. Yeah. Uh, somebody's mentioning Men in Black. I'm not really going there, but we can also add Men in Black to the, uh, we can add Men in Black to, to the list, but Men in Black is a spoof. It's not really uh, trying to get you to suspend your disbelief. It's really making fun of the Men in Black phenomenon, which is kind of close to what I'm talking about, but not quite there. Yeah, guys. Men in black are ancient. They have appeared throughout history in many forms. It's all by frames of reference. They've been here. They've been William Brambley and the Gods of Eden, which is being read right now by a buddy of mine, Eric. Y'all saw him in San Diego. Big old giant monster truck. He's reading the Gods of Eden right now. William Brambley calls them the custodians, which I think is really interesting because Brambley is a military historian and he doesn't really try to go into detail what, what they are. He just calls them custodians. They're guiding the narrative over human affairs. An adjustment bureau, so to speak. Almost like the 1998 movie Dark Secret, where cities change. You know, and all they're guiding this whole narrative about this world that we live in. Uh, was it Chris, no, it wasn't Crystal Beach. It was something Sands Beach. But you could never get to because the entire city was actually a spaceship. Also, a clever way to avoid the big mic drop in this video. So, <clears throat> we all know War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise is only an adaption from the much older War of the Worlds, uh, uh, written by H.G. Wells and, and uh, dictated on radio by Orson Welles. So I was like 1930-something, scared the hell out of everybody. Thought there was really, you know, they, they, it was presented like a, uh, you know, it was presented as if it was really happening. You know, Martians attacking and all that. There's a civilization on Mars, and they finally came over here. And, yeah, the fact that I'm talking about isn't even, even, even hinted at in that show either. So another good one, District 9. District 9, a spaceship of aliens becomes derelict. It has no choice but to make a, a, a landing on a nearby world. And the only world that's habitable is Earth. In, in the movie District 9, these aliens are basically put into a concentration camp. And uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a spoof. It's, it's got a lot of action. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, it's, it's an awesome movie. If you have not seen District 9, it's worth your watch. But the movie completely and absolutely normalizes extraterrestrials among them totally normalizes it even to where street gangs are, are doing backdoor deals with the man and and black market deals it's it's the movie is fantastic yeah but the but the movie completely avoids what i'm talking about so there's there's a few other movies i mean we could go on all night long about all the different uh all these different movies and stuff but uh, the Fifth Element, again, avoids it. Uh, Battleship, the day, of, the day of Tomorrow, Edge of Tomorrow. Then the recent one where we have to go fight an alien species in the 2040s. Uh, everybody's being recruited. What's the name of the movie? Everybody's being recruited, and they got to go to the future to fight the aliens and stuff. And, and because the future population has basically been decimated in the war, they had they they they're time traveling to the past to do recruitment and bring people from the past into the future to fight the aliens. Okay. That too avoids avoids this one item like the plague. There's nothing there's nothing in these movies. There's nothing in any of these productions that hints of this. And this is amazing. It's amazing, guys. So there's a lot more movies. I don't know them all. We can go all day about them. It's uh, you guys know more movies than I do. Oh, man, genius, genius. Starship Troopers, absolutely genius. Oh, I seen that Rhino. Nancy Puffins, are you flirting with Rhino? Because I saw you mention his name. 
she just turned beet red right behind her cell phone just now. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Shiva, that's right. The Nigerian set up an alien prostitution ring in District 9. That movie was so good. That movie was so good. Of course, Jay Bean, who controls Hollywood? We know. We know. We absolutely know. We already know. Alien Nation. Man, I haven't seen that movie. Damnation Alley. I haven't seen that movie. Edge of Tomorrow was good. Thank you. Guardians of the Galaxy is another one. It's a comedy, but Guardian, Guardians of the Galaxy is another one that absolutely normalizes the interaction of humans with, with alien and extraterrestrial species away from Earth. Yeah, it's another one, guys. Yeah. Oh, uh, Scarlet Sky. Terminator doesn't qualify. Terminator, Terminator's not about aliens. Terminator is about AI getting out of control and creating Terminators to protect itself from humans. Yeah, it wasn't about uh Oh, uh, just like the Matrix. The Matrix is not about UFOs. It's not about aliens at all. It's about an AI system protecting itself using humans as batteries and deceiving them. Oh, uh, Stargate. Nelson Perez. I don't know about Stargate. I was in prison all those years, so I really don't know anything about the Stargate series. I have no idea what it was about. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway. Yeah, uh, E.T. is another one. So all these all these movies, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, excellent one. Listen, guys, these movies, 2001, A Space Odyssey, every movie you're mentioning in the chat right now also, qualify, also qualifies to be on this list because the singular fact is not mentioned in any of those movies. None. You'll understand when we get to that part of this presentation. You'll understand exactly where I'm going with this. Yeah, guys, Ancient Aliens. The whole franchise, anybody who promotes extraterrestrial identities coming in and out of our atmosphere, anybody, all that's part of a PSYOP, guys. And there's a lot of people involved in that PSYOP. And there's a lot of players. There's a lot of different international organizations that contribute to the PSYOP. Yeah. India and China just recently did it by claiming they sent things to, to space and the moon. NASA is continually promoting it just by claiming they're sending things into space. Yeah, guys. This gets deep. This gets real deep. Morgan Mindy. <laughs> Man, I started something. Body Snatchers. Babylon 5. Prometheus. I see, guys, I just haven't seen a lot of these movies. I haven't seen them. So I don't know. But I'm pretty damn sure every movie that y'all are talking about is uh, X-Files. Yeah, I'm pretty damn sure none of these movies mention this one one item. So. We're going we're gonna to get to it. We're going to get to it. But we, you have to understand, there are many things that are promoted by Ancient Aliens franchise as direct evidence of extraterrestrials. One of those things is agroglyphs. Yeah. Um, crop circles is what you know them by better. But these agroglyphs are very unusual and because they, it's, it's, there is evidence that something in the sky, there is sky phenomena going on while these things appear. No one's ever seen a starship appear, ever. No one's ever seen a starship appear and create a crop circle. But they have seen phenomena that is inexplicable. That is not evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations, guys. We have, we have to call a spade a spade. A glowing light that changes its magnitude, changes its, its mass, its diameter, and can move inexplicably, a glowing orb that can change directions on a dime, defying all the laws of physics, completely defying inertia, is not a solid object. That is something else. In my video presentations on my own channel, I have given many examples as to why I believe that these are range finders. They are not UFOs. They are not vehicles that people sit in. They're range finders. Because of what they do and what, what victims have claimed they have seen right before they, they fortuitously escaped. Such as dimensional envelopes opening, right? these UFOs moving around, then suddenly vibrating, getting a little bit bigger. And then all of a sudden a hole appears where they're going right toward it and then something happens and they veer away. And it just kind of, the rip just kind of heals in space time and they get away. But they saw it. They literally saw the sky and clouds corkscrew as if they're not even really there. 
and they're like painted and they just corkscrew like like a like something froze a simulation and then was moving the simulation out of the way to draw in the victim in a small aircraft this has been reported multiple times guys this is not evidence of extraterrestrials it is evidence of a light that can move far far greater and faster than physics can allow therefore it must be something else but again i've got videos that cover that these lights that appear and create crop circles these they lights that appear and, and fly over mountains and valleys and they're called willow wisps and foo fighters those are not evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations those are evidence of ufos a ufo is an unidentified flying object it is not evidence of you of extraterrestrials we can't allow ourselves to make the leap that hollywood has programmed us to make we can't if you want to be critical and if you want to get down to the absolute truth of a matter you have to think clearly without all the programming baggage that is attached to us for decades and decades of this programming. Once we start to isolate particulars and study phenomena independent of other phenomena, certain universals are found, and we, we can begin to put the pieces together much better. Ancient Aliens franchises has one-dimensional, one-directional thinking, and, and the amazing CGI, awesome music, visuals the way they they cut from scene to scene to scene to scene is specifically designed so you cannot cogitate all you can do is absorb this is why these presentations are done be very careful what you watch when you're watching a presentation that flashes you four or five images per second and then sticks to an image for two seconds and then three seconds on this one and then bam 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 in four seconds you saw nine images and there's somebody with a monotone voice telling you this and this. And according to the ancient cuneiform, it is found that a, a flash in the sky and debris fell upon the ground. And the Assyrians thought the God, the God had exploded. So they gathered up the pieces on the, and you'll have, you'll have some guy narrating an ancient text while the images that are shown to you have nothing to do with that. But they're, but they heavily infer that they do in the music absolutely glues this the, the imagery and the voice the narration to the narrative it's all it's all a type of brainwashing it's very very good what they do i have watched i have watched ancient aliens presentations and i was really startled by the techniques i was observing i was like wow the subliminal programming, every bit of this, and even the actor, even the guys that are talking are employing neuro-linguistic programming. I'm like, what is, this is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's in your face, intelligence psyops. So ancient aliens, we're going to get to it in this video, dudes. I don't make claims lightly. You know what? No, we're going to get into it right here. Crop circles are not evidence of extraterrestrials or evidence of something else going on. Crop circles are a type of communication. All the way back to the 1677 woodcut of the mowing devil, we have in, in the written record evidence of these crop circles all the time, these agroglyphs. And the more people study them, the more complex they become. I have a book, Anunnaki Homeworld. It's selling very well right now. That book was published in 2011, and I, and I laid out a whole chapter on not only, not only agroglyphs, what they're for, how they're being created, but also what do they mean it's amazing they are they are two-dimensional geometrical calendars and i've showed this and it's easy for anybody to verify with a calculator and they're giving a specific date to watch out for with little comet symbols and little destruction symbols they're all in there guys it's amazing something is communicating to us not in words but in geometry and they're doing it in a very profound way and they're not doing it with UFOs, which are vehicles. They're doing, it, they're doing it with a type of technology that when we see it operative, we mistake it for something else. Now, crop circles. Well, Hollywood did a really good job brainwashing the public about the crop circles. Uh, the movie was called Signs. 
Signs immediately, immediately put it in the collective's mind that crop circles are made by ETs, are made by aliens. When it's not true at all. And the movie Signs also have, have, doesn't have a hint of this, of this amazing fact that I'm going to tell you guys. So, yeah, it doesn't have, doesn't have, doesn't have a hint of it. I forgot about that movie Signs until I just, just started talking about uh, crop circles. So these Foo Fighters, these Willow Whips, these things that I have shown in um, William Cordes' books, Unusual Phenomena. I did a video about it showing you all the strange things. They appear and they start rotating and they create tornadoes. They've been seen coming out of exploding volcanoes. These strange lights, these Willow Wisps, often called UFOs, can also become the very shape that they are expected to be. Trevor James Constable created a special ultraviolet lens for a camera, and he took a lot of pictures. He's got some really cosmic pulse of the universe or some, cosmos or something like that. I can't remember. Booktree publishes two books by him. Trevor James Constable took pictures of these things and shows that these amoeba, amoeba, amorphous, shape-changing lights are in the sky. And often they can't be seen with the naked eye, but they can see that you can take pictures of them with an ultraviolet lens. He showed this. Pictures in his book are fantastic. But these are not evidence of an extraterrestrial civilization, guys. They're not evidence at all because we've never seen them going in and out the atmosphere. They're always close to the ground, creating ground phenomena, even lightning storms. So, uh, see, I, you know I got to routinely check my chat, make sure my audio's still going. This is fully charged, but should be all right. Yes, they do look holographic. There's no doubt. Photon ships. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Yeah. So, um, Trevor James Constable is somebody you should look into. But also, more of the conditioning comes from very popular writers who were who they were made popular. It's like it's like the media just picked picked up and ran with them. You guys know Whitley Stryber. In the 80s, he put, he put out a lot of books. Oh, was it David Jacobs or Frank Jacobs? One of them put out a book called The Threat. That book took off. Got everybody thinking about alien implants, alien abductions. Yeah, guys, these popular authors like Whitley Stryber and Jacobs, there's many others. There's many others. Just because an author can put together four or five books on ETs, on alien, on alien phenomena, on alien theory and all that does not mean that's not evidence of the existence of extraterrestrials. That's evidence of the of a man's interpretation of variant phenomena as being from extraterrestrial orbit origin. We have to take things at face value. When you read these books, they begin to fall apart. There's just a bunch of stories. There's nothing conclusive. You can't prove anything that's in these books. They're very interesting narrations and item and itemizations of what could be facts but there's just they, they don't attach to anything you'll understand what I, what I mean in a minute such as the implant evidence if humans are being abducted i don't have a problem with believing that it's been going on for thousands of years if humans are being abducted by a extraterrestrial civilization there should be some evidence of that. There should be some evidence other than subjective testimony. The problem with a lot of testimony is it's very conflicting. I do believe that there are many women and some men who have been abducted. And I do believe that they think that they were abducted by aliens. I have no problem with that. And there's many books that have very compelling evidence that this phenomenon has been going on for a very long time. But I'm also very aware that there's other researchers who have come out and published books that are not popular. And in those books, we find out that upon hyp hypnotic regression, it is found that many of the people who claim to have been abducted by aliens actually do recall big-headed green figures hanging around them but they also describe things that should not be. Hospital rooms with doctors in white suits and men wearing black hats and black suits walking outside 
the main light. Sometimes the drugs these, these people had in their system that made them lay down and be still to, to undergo whatever operation they were undergoing, the drugs weren't powerful enough and people opened their eyes and they saw humans wearing, wearing business suits and doctors in white uniforms with nurses on the outside of a circle of people dressed as aliens, not real aliens. Yeah, guys, these stories of alien abduction, they're not evidence of people being abducted by aliens. What they are, are evidence of people being abducted. There's a, that's a huge, that's a huge difference. Dr. Roger Lear has put his career on the line, his reputation on the line. He's been attacked multiple times because he has shown on film these so-called alien implants. And they're technological. They're more technologically advanced than anything Roger Lear has seen. But he was able to cut them open in a membrane sack and, and study them and look at them and see that they're full of circuitry. They got there, There's something very sophisticated about them. But they're still technology. Technology has never been evidence of extraterrestrial origin. This is something that the suspension of disbelief has caused the collective to absorb. Hollywood is very good at what they do. But just because something is unexplained here in the world does not mean we have to jump to the conclusion that it comes from a different world. That's a problem. So, yeah, there's a lot of books by, by, by these men like Whitley Stryber and David Jacobs, UFO testimonies. It doesn't matter if you publish a 700-page book that has 900 eyewitness testimonies of UFOs in the sky. That is not evidence of extraterrestrial civilization. That is evidence of UFOs. That is evidence of unidentified flying objects in our skies. The observatories that we have all around the world are not reporting that these UFOs are going in and out of our atmosphere. It's just the opposite. They don't go in and out of the atmosphere. They go in bodies of water, valleys, and volcanoes. So, and we'll get to that. Dr. Roger Lear is somebody you need to look into. He wrote a book called Aliens in the Scalpel. Yeah, not a book to read before you go to sleep. So, also the channeling. You guys know I'm not, I'm not with it. You guys already know there is... There's no room in archaics for channeling. I hope, I'm sorry that offends a bunch of you guys. Some of you guys like to go to those, cha those channels about channeling. I'm, I'm not. I'm not with it. Almost every channeler I have ever listened to said chronologically inaccurate information. And that right there, I just can't. Everything to me translates as chronology. It doesn't matter what presentation I listen to. I listen for the details. When I, when I hear certain things, I know are factually factually incorrect and can easily be shown to be incorrect, but they come out as somebody channeling. Somebody's channeling some information about Atlantis or channeling something that happened uh, in history and they're pretending that they were there or they're receiving information from someone who existed during a certain time period, but the information that they're getting through the channel is anachronistic. I'm, I call that as bullshit. I'm, I'm sorry. I have no patience for channelers. I have not yet found one that is verifiable. And I don't know how to even establish the veracity unless they're channeling some material that can be verified. Because if I came into contact with a channeler who told me that they were legit, I have a list of questions for that channeler. If you're truly channeling something from another dimension, then it should be very easy to find out the exact time coordinates when certain events happened in the past. Because if you're in another dimension, you are looking at our dimension objectively, and you can find these out quickly. We are subjective, meaning we are subject to this dimension. Therefore, we really have to search and try to figure out through intellect, through trial and error, different facts. But somebody in another dimension can look straight into ours and see anything that we're talking about. Read P.D. Alspinsky, and he'll, he'll totally, totally explain it to you. Hers the book is called Hersham Organum. It was written a hundred years ago. The channelers have no place in archaics. I have yet to hear a single one of them that to me was speaking absolute truth. I just can't do it. So I'm sorry. I know I know a bunch of you get, get offended with that. I'm not trying to hear it, guys.
So it's it's never going to be a part uh, unless one of them steps forward and contacts me and says, hey, you can put me to the test. Ask me your questions. And if they, I ask those questions to a channeler and they come back, I promise you I will bring them live on my channel, apologize to them, and then start promoting them. Yeah, but these are these are tough questions. And somebody who's truly channeling another entity, that entity is going to know the answer to these questions. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not trying to hear it, guys. Channeling is not evidence at all of extraterrestrial entities. If you believe that channeling is evidence of anything, um, I'm sorry, but you can be made to believe in anything. That just has no place in archaics. So another phenomenon that goes back many centuries and might go back thousands of years are the cattle mutilization, the mutant mutilization. I just tried to make a word of cattle mutilations, the uh, animal mutilations, cow, mostly cows, but sometimes pigs, goats, and horses. They're inexplicable, guys. Ancient Aliens franchise has done a, a great job of trying to of trying to explain the cattle the cattle mutilations and all that are all ETs. All, all, that's all extraterrestrials and all ETs. Okay, well, employing Occam's razor, extraterrestrials is already off the table. Off the, it's off the table. This world is big enough to have its own mysteries that we don't have to attribute things that are off-world to any of the anomalies that occur here. Cattle mutilations are real. Your Jason of Archaics is not telling you they're not happening. I've read way too much material convincing me that they are happening. I even believe I had a co conversation with a farmer in New Mexico who told me about his experiences. Uh, matter of fact, it was in it was my, my, my first trip to San Diego. Matter of fact, when I went to that UFO city. I keep forgetting the name of that city. Uh, the city, Roswell, when I went to Roswell, which has zero evidence whatsoever of any type of extraterrestrial activity. I understand UFOs landed elsewhere, and then they were taken to Area 51. I get all that. I understand the narrative. It was all Hollywood, Hollywood production. Every bit of it was bullshit. But it's all a part of the, of the PSYOP, because a true PSYOP is going to have it's going to have the social engineers involved helping with Hollywood productions. It's going to have social media engineers involved helping with like ancient aliens franchise. It's going to have government involved in the, in the, and government gets involved really cleverly too, really cleverly. They have official, they have an official meeting. The Pentagon has a meeting about the possible existence of UFOs. Oh yeah. Just announcing that gets you to believe all of a sudden that, Oh, the government's in the government's in possession of UFO data. They know they got one. They've got they gotta have one. It's all psyop. Every bit of it. Just like when they release classified documents. Yeah. Those those are leaks. Those are intel leaks. They're done for a reason. They're giving you an Easter egg because that Easter egg absolutely promotes the paradigm that we are being visited by an extraterrestrial species when we are not. Something else is going on. Now, oh, somebody, somebody mentioned Sasquatch. Yeah, guys, listen, that's the hide-and-seek champion. Everybody, a whole bunch of people have seen Yetis, Snowman, the abominable Snowman, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Snow Walker. He's got many names. Yeah, never caught one, though. Never caught one. But did he leave footprints behind that people made plaster casts out of? Yeah. Is that plaster cast evidence of the existence of Bigfoot? No. It's evidence of the existence of, the existence of a plaster cast that's shaped like a big old foot. You don't know who made that plaster cast. You don't know. But is there evidence of Bigfoot? Yes, there is. Many, many people tell the same thing. A very foul, sulfurous stench. Yeah. Another common denominator about Bigfoot is he's never attacked anybody. Bigfoot's been seen in different variant forms from Alaska, all Canada, all, all through the Yukon, the northern states of the United States, in Mexico, all over Europe, all the way to the Himalayas. Bigfoots have been seen. They've never been caught. But they have actually helped stranded camp campers. They have pulled hurt people 
out of burning wreckage when they have accidents in the country. Yeah, Bigfoot's another thing we might need to go into. Talking about some multidimensional material now. We're talking about a life form that when it appears physically here, it stinks to high heaven. And it leaves trace amounts of hair, which is very unusual. It's been studied under a microscope. It's an unusual type of hair. Dogs have chased Bigfoot, and Bigfoot just vanishes. Bigfoot has never been found because he's the hide-and-seek champion. We should do, we should do a, a video on Bigfoot one of these. I have four books on, on Bigfoots, Yeti, Snow Walkers, all that. We need to get into them. One of these days, we will. But Bigfoot, yeah, uh, <clears throat> Bigfoot's, really, Bigfoot's really interesting, but it's not. Bigfoot's not evidence of extraterrestrial civilization at all. At all. Hell, they couldn't even smell that bastard. They'd kick him out the UFO. I'm real sure of that. So, three, maybe four times in the last 70 years, astronomers have gotten excited about receiving radio signals from space. Radio signals from space is not evidence of an extraterrestrial civilization. The radio signals were not of an intelligent type design like that. It has now been shown that radio signals do emit from certain luminaries. Some call them pulsars, quasars, black holes. We don't know. Everybody listening to my voice is on the world, on a, on a surface, and when we look up at the sky, we are looking up into a light show. It can be nothing more than that for us because we can't go up there. If you still believe that NASA put aluminum foil on a golf cart and sent it to the moon, then you can be made to believe in anything. I understand they fooled an entire generation because back then it was easier to fool a people who would have never believed that their government would have fooled them. But now that people have analyzed the NASA manifests, the list of all the equipment that allegedly was taken to the moon. Now that we understand the Russian reports of the holographic nature of the moon, now that we understand and NASA has, ha has had to defend themselves by publicly stating that they've lost the technology, now that we understand that they had a, a, a technologically advanced, more superior than the Apollo program, they had the space shuttle program. They had the Columbia and the Atlantis and the Discovery, and they had all four of, had all four of these shuttles, and not one of those shuttles ever went to the moon. Yeah. And instead of continuing the shuttle program, which would only, which would only serve to basically show the public that, man, we We've been bullshitting them so long. We haven't done anything in space. The Russians knew from the beginning. That's why they never even tried to go to the moon. They knew the moon wasn't anywhere you could go to. It's a holographic light show. The very fact that you can see stars through the dark shadow of the moon when the moon is supposed to be a full sphere is absolute proof that the moon is not solid. So, yeah, it's, that's not... Radio, radio bursts like, like what pulsars put out, this radioactivity coming from certain luminaries is not evidence of an extraterrestrial civilization. They got excited in the 70s and the 80s about the radio signals. They're no longer excited about that. They now know certain luminaries put off radio signatures. It's not evidence of anything. So, now we know, we know that there are many, many inexplicable phenomena, many inexplicable phenomena. We know I've showed on my channel turtles frozen in solid ice raining from the sky. Yeah, all kinds of fish of the same species and the same size raining from the sky. Yeah, tadpoles and frogs of the same species all raining from the sky. Over and over and over, we have these things, this fallout. Crustaceous material, carbonaceous material, red dust, red rain, red mud. We have all these things. Charles Ford has done a fantastic job, and so has William Corliss, of, of itemizing all these instances in history when unusual things just fell from the sky. Even artifacts, artifacts fossilized in rock just fell from the sky. I've showed these on my channel. I'm going to show a lot more. 
I have, we have a lot to go into. Here's just this, just this right here is William Cordes. My William Cordes library is getting huge. I told you guys, these are the books of the future. This is them. These books here, these books have the truth. Everything about ooh parts, ancient artifacts, anomalies, th things that cannot be technologically advanced artifacts that have been found in civilizations all, all, all underground. Civilizations that were buried in resets, mud floods, earthquakes, tsunamis. Th this series of books, there's no supposition in these books. These are all scientific reports that are itemized from all the, all the source materials are covered. This is the collection of William Cordes. William Cordes put all these scientific documents together. I've already gone through many of them with you on my channel. And now that I just acquired five more William Cordes books or six more William Cordes books, we're going to go through more of them. But these are amazing. They are absolutely data packed with so much material. But unfortunately, even though these are scientific books, William Cordes in his scientific data is ignored by ancient aliens. Why? Because William Cordes was not an ancient alien theorist. He's a scientist. He put together some amazing data from hundreds of scientific reports and sources showing technologically advanced civilization, showing ooh parts, out of place artifacts, showing mineral things that just doesn't do not make sense because our frames of reference have been corrupted. We've been made to believe in things that have no meaning, while the things that have meaning have not been taught to us. Therefore, it's hard to process the type of data that William Cordes reveals. I've been promoting William Cordes and Charles Ford since I started my channel, and I won't stop. These men were true pioneers. Just the facts, ma'am. But ancient aliens franchise will take every bit of this data, not cite William Cordes, and then turn around and use it as evidence that an extraterrestrial species is messing with our world or coming to our world. In the, ancient, in the ancient alien psyop, this is what they do. Every inexplicable piece of phenomena and data that comes across them, the same thing Eric Von Daniken did it, Zechariah Sitchin did it, the more, they, the more they come across any type of data, what they do is they package it as extraterrestrial. And it, all they do is get their CGI team, badass graphics, their music guy comes in, put some good music to it, they get a narrator, they get a writer to write the little, little bullshit teleprompter uh, uh, script, and they put it together, and they put it on a history, and there you go. Another 200,000 people are, are befuddled into believing all this BS. It's a really good, entertaining piece, and they walk away thinking they learned something factual. And it's all fantasy. So, Almost 2,000 people in attendance. Hit that like button. Let my haters know you like me. Anyway. Yeah. Animal mutilations are not evidence. Something else is happening. Yes, the animals are being mutilated. Yes, it's laser incisions. Yes, certain organs are removed almost with surgical precision. No body fluids around. Animals are left dead like they've been cut into with a laser. Absolutely true. That's not evidence of an extraterrestrial civilization. At all. At all. Objects falling out the sky. Those books right there. And I got more. I got more. I, that can't be all of it. I know I got more than that. More books about objects falling out the sky. Yeah, I got, I got a lot of them, guys. There's just, there's so many. So many. So. Anyway, so Eric Von Daniken really exploded onto the scene with his book, Chariots of the Gods. I'm not hating on Eric Von Daniken for his interpretation. The only problem is he's written 20 more books, and it's the same interpretation. You haven't modified your interpretation at all. You haven't changed your mind about anything. Everything you find, Mr. Daniken, is evidence of extraterrestrials. You're no longer you're no longer telling what you believe to do the, to be the truth. You're now a part of an agenda, and that's not cool. Zechariah Sitchin's no longer with us. 
But Zechariah Sitchin published the Earth Chronicles. Earth Chronicles are good. A lot of facts in there. And that's why the fantasy that he pushes is so believable. It's so believable that Billy Carson's probably made millions of dollars basically saying the same thing Zechariah Sitchin did. He just took the man's material and ran with it. Yeah, there's nothing original about Mr. Carson. Yeah, I'm not just talking about the Emerald Tablets book that I just went through. Mr. Car Mr. Carson has bought into this ancient aliens franchise. Therefore, he is a part of a PSYOP. He's a part of a PSYOP to specifically deceive the public. There's no evidence of extraterrestrials. It cannot be found. The Fermi paradox is a paradox because it's never been undone. The Fermi paradox is something I've talked about on my channel. As a matter of fact, I have a whole video about a whole long list of paradoxes that are recognized by the scientific community, and they all are evidence that we live in a construct. Yeah, the Fermi paradox is about extraterrestrials, and it's about the fact that if the if the galaxy is so old and extraterrestrials civilizations are so many, and then the Fermi paradox is basically it's a paradox. Why haven't any of them made contact with us? Why do not? Why do we not see any visual evidence of their existence in the night sky? Why do Why do we not see any evidence whatsoever that they have come here to our world? We don't. We have people that say that there's evidence, but they have not made their case. Let me give you an example. Legends and traditions of sky gods. That's not evidence of extraterrestrials. It's not evidence at all. Here's an example of that. The original cuneiform text concerning the arrival of Enki and the Anuna was by ship by way of Dillman. Ship across the great sea. But in Babylon, a thousand or so years later, those older Sumerian and Akkadian texts were rewritten by, by newer scribes. Those newer scribes, now, who called Enki Ea, now claim that Ea, what do you do? Ea called the sky gods down. That's not what the older texts say. The older texts are very similar to the Book of Enoch. In the Book of Enoch, the gods did not fall from the sky. They didn't fall from heaven. The gods descended from a mountain, Mount Artus. They came from a mountain. Yeah, in the original Sumerian, they descended a mountain. That they, I also believe in the Book of Adam and Eve, in the, in the pseudepigraphical text. It was, it was that Lucifer wanted, it was the holy mountain in ancient times is where gods came from. They came out of the mountain because the mountain was an inference. And anybody who's going to hide from a flood is not going to have the entrance to their stronghold on low land. It's going to be up in the mountain. So, anyway, there are many, many legends. Of the legend. Robert Temple, he's another one. Robert Temple got real popular with the, uh, the serious mystery. Oh, yeah. Guess what? A whole lot of researchers have come behind Robert Temple, and they cannot verify the things that he claimed. He claimed he went to a place in Africa among the Dogon tribe. And among the Dogon tribe, you heard of the Nomo. The Nomo were supposed to be an extraterrestrial species from the star Sirius. It appears now that every bit of that was made up. There are other researchers that have come behind Mr. Temple. Exas they're exa exasperated. They don't know where he got that data. But there's so many authors that copied Robert Temple and published more and more books. The same thing Billy Carson did with Zechariah Sitchin. All these new authors come up and they copy all this material. And the public is made to believe that a, a, an assertion in a published book has now become a fact. And it's not true. It's not true at all. So anyway, we'll leave Mr. Temple alone. Unless he wants to come on my channel and debate about the existence of extraterrestrials, we can do that all day. So, ooh parts, out of place artifacts. Ooh parts are not evidence of extraterrestrial species. Ooh parts are out of place artifacts. They are the they are direct evidence that technologically advanced civilizations were right here on the world, right here on Earth, not from space, right here. Remember, on my channel, I have many presentations where I explain to you it only takes us 200 years. We humans are very prolific, dynamic, imaginative people. We are. 
it only takes us 200 years to go from horse and buggy to the Hadron Collider. 200 years, that's all it takes. With 5,800 years of recorded history, we've been through to that 200 year period multiple times. We have suffered many resets. Yeah, in that time period, we've gone through four vapor canopies. Yeah, vapor canopy. That's one thing nobody wants to talk about. No one, nobody wants to, wants to uh, address the vapor canopy because the vapor canopies completely undermine almost everything we've learned about the ancient world. But in archaics, makes everything make sense. So, yeah, uh, you guys know the crystal skull? The crystal, the crystal skull with the movable, movable jaw. How the hell did they do that? How? An anatomically correct skull with even skull plate fractures and a movable jaw made of solid crystal. Well, I'm going to tell you now, the crystal skull, that skull is almost the same CC equivalent to a Cro-Magnon. And the Cro-Magnons weren't primitive like we've been told. Their art shows that they were post-cataclysm very intelligent. They had lost their infrastructure. The only thing left they had was art. They were hiding in caves because if out there in the wilds, they would have died. It was a huge cataclysm. The only place to go was hide in the caves. The Cro-Magnon lost their cities. They lost their infrastructure. They lost everything. It's like the book of Revelation. It describes in the end of the apocalypse, during the Great Tribulation, everybody's going to run to the mountains and they're going to hide in the caves. And they're going to hide the caves and try to bury themselves with rocks, trying to hide from the destruction that's going on outside. That is the exact same picture in the future apocalypse that we find that Cro-Magnon actually went through in the past. They went through that. Whatever happened to the Cro-Magnon was so catastrophically nightmarish after that. You guys, my archaics veterans, especially my Phoenix Knights, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. The chief characteristic of the Cro-Magnon was a belief in the afterlife. And in order to achieve the passage from this world into the next, they buried their dead. Not only with their clothing and possessions, but the Cro-Magnon made sure to fill the grave with red ochre. Now, what would make them do that? What would make them do that? What kind of cataclysm would have provided them enough red material to fill the graves with? So, you guys know, I don't have to tell you. But this, ain't, this isn't a video about, about the Phoenix. This isn't a video about the Phoenix at all. Now, in the year 1900, sponge divers off the coast of Crete found uh, a sunken ship. And in 1901, some of the objects were cleaned, and it was realized that this is an artifact. It was a box. And in 1902, the, uh, the, it was actually called a computer. They didn't know what it was. It was differential geared. The alloys and the, the whole thing was far more... The technology required to build the box itself was more advanced than the box itself. And it was very advanced. It's called the Antikythera Computer. An academic named De Sola Price spent his life studying this box. It has multiple gears forward and backward in time. Zechariah Sitchin has studied it and he, he, he published about it. So did, so did Eric Von Daniken. It is promoted widely by the Ancient Aliens franchise to be. A, uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's evidence of extraterrestrial contact. It's not. The Antikythera computer has a Greek date marker. The Greek date marker is 583 BC. The only thing that I know of that happened in 583 BC was the Phoenix phenomenon, predicted two years earlier by Thales of Miletus, a Phoenician by remote descent, widely, pub pub widely published and written about in Herodotus's The Histories, 450 BC. There's nothing extraterrestrial about the Antikythera computer. It was a computer that was used to, to calculate the years going backward and forward in time from a singular event in history. And that event was the sun darkening in the year 583 BC, in the month of May. That's what that device was for. That event is seen on the monument in Turkey called Yasilakaya, 
where the kings of Lydia and the kings of Media, who were at war for five years, concluded and, and did a peace agreement when the phoenix appeared in the sky and darkened the sun. They decided maybe we're not supposed to be at war after all. And they concluded a peace agreement. And on that monument is the sigil of the witness to that agreement. It was Nebuchadnezzar II, king of Jerusalem, king of Babylon. So anyway, sorry about the tangent. I go off on tangents sometimes, but that's the anti cathedral computer found in 1900 by sponge divers. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's seen in a lot of ancient mysteries books. Ancient aliens is going to tell you E.T. brought it to us. They're full of shit. So, uh, well, I mean, you guys know it. They're going to they're say a whole lot of things like, um, well, well, we'll get into those. Eric, Eric Von Daniken and Zechariah Sitchin, they did a good job of, of itemizing the mystery, showing all these things from the ancient world that are factual. They man, Mohenjo Daro and Larrick and, and the Urban Baba Valley and the great 12,000 foot elevation. Cusco and Machu Picchu and Tiwanaku, Lake Titicaca, Puma Punka, all these ancient ruins made of gigantic megaliths they claim that were built by aliens. They're not. They're built by humans using a more sophisticated technology. Yeah, well, there's a whole, there's a whole dynamic operative here in being able to twist every single thing into an extraterrestrial deal. It's almost offensive. David Hatcher Childress, you're like just you're basically saying that humans don't have the intellect or engineering to do these things themselves, but we do, we do, we have in the past, we've done it. Yeah, it's crazy, guys. Aliens didn't come here and build any of that. Yeah, they just didn't. And I mean, there's so many too, guys. There's so many here's, here. There's so many. Look at these. Look at this right here. Guys, don't don't think I'm not well read. Don't think I don't have this massive library for nothing. I mean, I'm talking about there are so many good books from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s that show ancient mysteries that are so profound. I promise you, you're going to get so many videos coming from me. I always have 500 more videos left in me. I promise. This book here, all these ancient mysteries, they're fascinating, but they weren't aliens that did it. They're not aliens, guys. All these books, they're fascinating. Here's one. Here's another one. These books are packed. These books are packed with awesome stuff. But it's not aliens. It's not aliens at all, guys. Yeah. These books have archaeological anomalies, enigmatic things. Things I, I, I'm say, I'm a pretty well-read guy. Some of these books have surprised me with things I'd never heard of or artifacts that, that were just buried. As soon as they're found, the Chinese government suppresses it. But the original archaeologists took their own pictures and got them out the country. Over and over and over, guys, we see. Remember, I told you in the past, the Internet was not about the dissemination of information. It was about the control of a paradigm. The Internet was never designed for you to actually learn the truth. If it was, there would have been websites telling you about the 138-year periodicity of the Phoenix phenomenon this major editing of our holography. The internet would have been on top of it. If AI was real, if AI was real, was able to data mine all, everything in the world instantaneously and put, and put together the facts for us, you wouldn't have to learn the facts in Jason Brashear's books, Lost Scriptures of Giza, Anunnaki Homeworld, When the Sun dark, Darkens, Nostradamus and the Plants of Apocalypse, Giants on Ancient Earth, uh, Hell, I don't, I don't wrote so many books, I forgot. I, I forgot five five to seven of them right now. Awaken the Immortal Within. I got so many books, can't remember all the titles. But uh, you wouldn't have to learn them from me. They would be accessible to you on Google. Just you know, Google the truth, Phoenix, and it would all pop up. Man, there it is. But it's not. The internet was about the control of information. And all these franchises that are out there are helping perpetuate the deceit. They all work together. It's all working in tandem, guys. This is why archaics is ignored by so many. None of these men want to debate these things. They will be crushed in a debate. They will look really, really stupid when I just start dropping fact after fact after fact. Because it will be very obvious to the listener that these people are now freestyling. They're just making up things. They're just trying to sound intelligent. You don't have to be intelligent when you have the facts. Because the facts speak for themselves. 
And if you have the facts, then that can that can allow you to just ask the necessary questions. Yeah, a debate doesn't have to be nasty. All I have to do is ask a few questions to somebody and the public will know real quick that that person is full of shit. Here's another one. Yeah, guys, these books are packed. Every one of these books, the conclusion of the writer, because they were programmed to conclude this, was that this is so anomalous, it is so unusual, it must have been aliens. Extraterrestrials mu must be responsible for all these mysteries. Must. Look at that, that artifact that was found in Peru. That artifact right there looks like a space shuttle, looks like a ship. Am I saying that it's not a ship or a space shuttle? No, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying it's not a UFO. No, I'm saying it's not from an extraterrestrial civilization. I'm saying that that was found in a 2,000 year old tomb because that is an accurate depiction of a flying craft that we have from ancient Vedic records called a Vimana. And we even have flight manuals translated from the Sanskrit. Yeah, guys, technology is not new. We have pre-flight manuals published in Sanskrit in India and China, where they were found. Yeah, ancient Aryan Sanskrit pre-flight manuals that tell you what 40 or 50 things you need to do to check your Vimana before you take off into the sky. There are other combat manuals that teach you how to fight your Vimana against other Viminas, or Vimanas, however you say it, Vimanas in the sky. They train you how to dogfight. I'm not making any of this up. Vedic scholars have already published all this material. Yeah, all these books, guys, I'm not saying it's, that that's not real. I'm saying it is real. We've been technologically advanced multiple times. Here's another one. Here's another one, guys, right here. Andrew Tomas. I just did a book report on Andrew Tomas. Y'all loved it. We are not the first. That book was packed with some amazing stuff. Remember the story about the guy from the 1895 that took the two Eskimos up to the North Pole and then found out it was warm as hell up there? And the Eskimos said, we can't go any further because we were told in ancient times, the fathers were told we can't go back yet. And he was like, well, what's going on? What are you talking about? It's beautiful. It's not even cold up here. Let's go explore. Let's go check it out. Eskimos weren't trying to hear it. They left his ass. They went back into the cold went far south, all the way back to, to, to uh, wherever they came from, the Inuits. They left. They abandoned his ass. They were not going to go forward because in ancient times, the fathers told, were told by whoever was living in that paradise at the North Pole that they were banished and they could not come back until the time. So they took that to heart. They knew that was paradise. They knew that's where they came from when they were banished and kicked out into the world. And they've been in new Eskimos ever since, waiting for the time when they would be called back home. But it wasn't time to go back home, so they would not join that dude. And that dude's dog started to panic, so he turned around too. But he found mammals, foxes, bear. He found all kinds of creatures that cannot exist in the Arctic. He found all kinds of things. He found fox trails and everything. He found, and then he kept going forward. He got real warm, and he got, he got spooked. Yeah, that's in that book, Andrew Tomas, 1895, what he found. Kind of makes you wonder what the U.S. military was really trying to hide about, about the North Pole. So, Andrew Tomas right here. We are not the first. He also wrote this book. So, you know we're going to have to get into it. Yeah, On the Shores of Endless Worlds, full of ancient mysteries. It promises to be another Charles Fort-like book. I'm excited about getting into it and doing a video for you guys, but there's not going to be anything in that book. That's evidence of extraterrestrials. At all. So, <clears throat> I started this video with a mask on, the Predator mask from the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I didn't prepare a cup of coffee. And I'm hoping that by some divine intervention, a cup of coffee is like delivered right here. It would be just like so awesome. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I'm going to put that in my field. So, I'm going uh, to, I didn't prepare one. But I will say this, I have to commend Graham Hancock. What? Oh, man. I know that shocks a lot of you guys, but I have to commend Graham Hancock because one thing I've noticed through all his books, and like I said, some of his books are really good. I just disagree with his chronology. I, I adamantly disagree with his chronology. At, Graham Hancock is not a chronologist at all by any species of, of analysis. But I will say this. 
He's got some really compelling material, especially his holographic theory about the nature of the Great Pyramid. But when it comes to the Ancient Aliens franchise, Graham Hancock and I stand side by side. We're not entertaining that bullshit. As far as I know, Graham Hancock does not endorse Ancient Aliens. He's talking about ancient civilizations and all that, but I haven't really heard him talk endorse the, the ancient aliens. I could be wrong, and it wouldn't surprise me if I was wrong, but so far, I don't remember anything by Mr. Hancock that says anything about aliens are responsible for all the ooh parts and anomalies of the ancient world. I could be wrong, guys. I just don't remember. Yeah, it's crazy. So, one thing is one thing that the ancient aliens franchise really likes to lean on is the Sumerian king list, the prism of the Sumerian king list. Yeah, the Sumerian kings. Oh my God, seven kings lived for two hundred and forty-one thousand two hundred years. That is absolute proof that extraterrestrials were here because humans can't live that long. Oh. My God. You guys already know. My Archaics veterans, you especially know. 241,200 was not years. It was shars, which is turning of the stars, which was the only time-keeping system that they understood at that time period. It was, the keeping of the, it was the keeping of the day count. As soon as the circumpolar stars circled one time around the eye of the dragon, Alpha Draconis, that was one day. Just like Genesis, the very first timekeeping method in Genesis, and the evening and the morning was the first day. And the evening and the morning was the second day. God created this, God created that, and the evening and the morning was the third day. The very first timekeeping system mentioned in Genesis is the day count. 241,200 days is only. 670 years. Anybody can do the math on that. Anybody can do the math on that. The Sumerian king list describes a dynasty of eight rulers, seven kings and an eighth who only ruled for a short period of time before the great flood cut off their rule. The book of Revelation picks the story back up. In the book of Revelation, the, the dynasty of the eight kings returns. It even mentions that seven kings have ruled, and one is, and one, and one has not yet, not yet come. He is the eighth, but he is of the seven. The riddle is right there in the book of Revelation, attaching the Revelation text to the Sumerian king list. And, the, and what attaches one to the other is the dark satellite. The dark satellite is a prison where these eight occupants are inside. And they are not released until a definitive time in the future, which is the year 2052. Has nothing to do with this video. I'm just do, telling you these things because none of this has anything to do with extraterrestrial theory at all. But this is what the Ancient Aliens franchise has borrowed. They have borrowed the elements of the Sumerian king list and they have transposed them to a false paradigm. Has nothing to do with that. The Sumerian king list involves an underworld prison. It's all bullshit, guys. You have been told to look the opposite way. Where am I concluding? Where does this go? What is the single fact about all those movies, all these franchises, all these things that I've described throughout these videos, all these authors? What is the one thing? Why wouldn't any of these movies ever postulate this scenario? It's a scenario that we have covered multiple times, but you won't find it in none of these major movies. It wasn't a hint of an Independence Day. In District 9. Nothing. None of these movies. Because they don't want to even draw attention to the truth. They don't want you to see anything that's real. They want you to keep looking up at the stars. Mike C., I saw a comment you made earlier in here. I'm telling you now, you nailed it. You nailed it. One of my moderators. You nailed it. The one common denominator, Battlestar Galactica, Book Rogers, Star Wars, Star Trek, yeah, Independence Day, all these major everything that was conditioning you to always look up at the stars, the final frontier. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 
There he is, Darth Vader, in a galaxy far, far away. UFOs are not vehicles. They're rangefinders. Those rangefinders have the ability to open up a dimensional envelope and literally trap something on the surface and drag it into chambers in the underworld. The common denominator that is omitted, that there is a vast silence about for all these Hollywood productions, not one movie ever shows giant extraterrestrial cities hidden in Earth's underworld. That's avoided like the plague. Name, name a single movie that provides that scenario. If you, I'm not saying you can't. I don't know. I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying that we can name 100 movies about UFOs and extraterrestrials that don't. And that's, that's really interesting that they would not want to draw any attention like that. Even the movie They Live. Rowdy Randy Piper. You guys know? The famous bubblegum statement. You guys know? It was amazing. Rowdy Randy Piper, he nailed he, He's talking about, I forgot, uh, uh, something about chewing bubblegum and I'm out of bubblegum. Kicking ass and bubblegum, whatever. You guys know? But even in that movie, even in that movie, nothing. Yeah, I don't know if Don Hart's in the chat. If Don Hart's in the chat, I sure would like a cup of coffee. I don't see her, though. She might be busy doing something. I had to call my publisher. It was total emergency. Bro, we're not done with this presentation. We got some more. I got some more bombs to drop on you. Listen, I put that video out for 20 minutes explaining to people the importance of my five published books. Now, I've got many. I got like a dozen, 13, 14, 15. I don't, I don't, I've lost, I lost count. I have a lot of published books, but these five here are the ones carried by book free. I have six carried by book tree, but I didn't have any copies. Awaken the Immortal Within. You can get it on Amazon. But the five books, my first five published books, uh, I did that 20 minute video the other day. The overwhelming response. Uh, I have a lot of copies of books and boxes, but I had to call my publisher today and tell him, hey, I need you to overnight me uh, two or three boxes more of these books, this books, and this books. Because we were, Don and I were not prepared for the response. I had no idea. Uh, I was just trying to sell all these books that I didn't sell in San Diego and in Houston. These were just extra books. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sold out. I mean, it's no big deal. We'll still fulfill orders. Uh, it, it take, uh, uh, my publisher sending a whole bunch more right now. He literally emptied his own stock out, uh, sending them all to me so I can continue selling them in here. And then I'll just pay him. I'll just pay him on the back while he's going to go ahead and publish some more. But I thought it was amazing. I said, wow, that's crazy. It's awesome. So she must, she's pretty busy, probably still processing orders right now. So, yeah, I do commend Graham Hancock. If it's true, Graham Hancock has not endorsed ancient aliens and he still avoids that topic. That is something he and I have some common ground on. That's 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 very interesting. Uh, again, ancient aliens, they make a real big deal about the dragon kings of China. Why? Just because they're called dragon kings doesn't mean they're UFO, they came off UFOs and they came extraterrestrial civilizations. That is absolutely ridiculous. Look, my informed field just manifested a cup of coffee and the deliverer is beautiful. Thank you. Look at that. My first sip of coffee during this presentation. You guys know you're in trouble. Man, it's good. Okay. So the dragon kings of China, guys, are anything but. In ancient Chinese, dragon-faced was to have a long beard because the Chinese at the time were smooth-skinned. They had not racially integrated with another, with another you know, race and culture until much later, which is why a lot of Chinese now can grow sparse hair. Not a lot, but they can grow some, some facial hair. But at one time, the Chinese couldn't grow any, any facial hair. Just like the ancient Egyptians, who had to wear wooden beards to emulate the gods. Not aliens and extraterrestrials. It's ridiculous. 
So, oh, uh, yeah, it's this. This goes into something else too, guys. We're gonna address this right now. I'm not gonna bite my tongue on it, man. Thor Heyerdahl did nothing wrong. The academic community shunned him. He did nothing wrong but promote the truth that all these indigenous, non-Caucasian peoples all claim that it was white people that built these fantastic civilizations. And then during a cataclysm, they left, promising to return one day. This gave rise to the legends of Votan in Viracocha in South America, and also Bokika in, in the Aztecs, Toltec, Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, it gave rise to these gods who promised to return, and they were described as white and bearded. This is why Cortez was so successful against the Aztec Braves, not because the Spanish could militarily overcome them, but because they had overcome their minds. Star Trek, Star Wars, Buck Rogers, The Last Starfighter. Yeah, guys, if they overcome your mind, they can make you believe anything. For Heyerdahl, I love him. I got all his books. Professor Waddell is even better. Totally describes the ancient world. Gives it to us black and white. Professor Waddell was also demonized for, for, for pub, widely publicizing this. So is Ignatius Donnelly. Ignatius Donnelly demonized for the exact same reason. Lewis Spence also for the exact same reason. I have all these books, guys, in my library. I have all their books in my library. I love Lewis Spence. I love Ignatius Donnelly. Uh, uh, Thor Heyerdahl. I'm missing some Professor Waddell books, but I got two of them, and they're good. They're so good. But yeah, it's all uh, these these original researchers and scholars. They tell us the truth about these civilizations, man. Ancient Aliens franchise has people believing that the heads on Easter Island were built by extraterrestrials. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. That place was wiped out in the Ogaijian Deluge, 1687 BC, by the Phoenix phenomenon in the month of May. I've already got multiple videos about it. Yeah, and that island was much bigger at that time. Ancient Aliens franchise has people believing that Stonehenge was built by aliens. It's not. Stonehenge, when it was Sir Norman Lockyer, drew some awesome pictures of what Stonehenge would have originally looked like. And it's amazing. It's amazing. It is a three-dimensional template of our holography. I describe it in Anunnaki Homeworld of my book. In my book, Anunnaki Homeworld, I show you what Stonehenge is. I show you how to decode Stonehenge. It's all geometry. And the geometry is three-dimensional, meaning a, a, meaning a block of stone represents the number six. It's got six planes. One, two, three, four sides, two ends. And when you apply that to the entire thing and the angle of 23.5 degrees, the obliquity that is found in Stonehenge, everything makes sense. The horseshoe, the, trilo the trilithons, the 19 lunar stones, everything laid out. Stonehenge was a calendar in the ancient world. It was a calendar designed for a people who could not see the sun. Stonehenge is vapor canopy technology. It's awesome. So anyway, but humans couldn't have built it. It had to have been E.T. Had to have been. E.T. must have also built Newgrange. E.T. must have also built Durrington Walls. Yeah, that's crazy. E.T. might have built the Hadrian's Wall, and the whole Hadrian, Emperor Hadrian probably wasn't even at war with the Picts. And E.T. came down here from space and just built all these walls. The Great Wall of China, which we know of now, was the Great Silk Road of Rome. wasn't even built by Romans either. We've been deceived, guys. They lied to us. E.T. came down here with giant Lego blocks and built that road. And then it petrified during a reset. And we think it's a real road. It was just E.T. building blocks. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like Godzilla Lincoln logs. Whole thing so so crazy. <clears throat> Great Pyramid of Giza. That's the main evidence for ancient aliens franchise. The Great Pyramid of Giza. Giza. But if you watch my channel, I've got videos that explain to you how six hundred men using machines could have built the Great Pyramid complex in just ninety years. 
I explain it. I show it. I do the math. I show you a chart. Show you how. Here's how many blocks had to have been quarried a day. Dressed. Transported. Stacked. Put it. Put where they go. Go it. And in 90 years, the whole project could have been easily done by 600 men using machines. Why do I say machines? Because that's what Sir Flinders Petrie saw. He saw machine marks. He saw evidence of hypersonic boring in 1900. He didn't know what he was looking at. And he said that in his writings. He's a man that's beyond me. I don't understand. He doesn't, I don't understand. There's a fracture quarrying. And it's just the techniques that were used to build the Great Pyramid far exceeded Sir Flinders Petrie's ability to process. He didn't understand. But engineer David Davidson added to it, and he understood a lot more. That something technologically advanced had existed in the ancient world and was printing these blocks out. It's almost like a 3D printer. And then another engineer surfaced in the 1990s named Christopher Dunn. And Christopher Dunn is a modern engineer, and he's, he's taking it to a whole other level. He has shown absolute proof that the Great Pyramid was a machine. Yeah, guys, 600 men could have built that. We don't need ET. We don't need ET to do a damn thing for us. We can do it ourselves because it only takes 200 years to go from horse and buggy to Hadron Collider. Once you get that in your head, you'll realize how many times we have been technologically advanced in the past. How many times? It's amazing. It's amazing. Another, another real, another gem. Yeah, a, a real star child of the ancient aliens franchise is the sarcophagus in Central America underneath the pyramid of Lord Pakal Vulcan. You guys have seen it. Eric Von Daniken said it, and Zechariah Sitchin said it, and a whole host of other authors have all copied it. Billy Carson said it. They all say, look at this guy. He's a, he's a, he's a Mayan astronaut, and he's leaning back, and he's about to take off, and he's looking up, and he's in his rocket, and he's going to take off. Look at all the fire on the side. You see it's rocket fire. Absolute poppycock. It is absolute bullshit. I do have a video in my Phoenix Phenomenon series, in my montages. It's very clear. I show all the pictures of the whole sarcophagus. I show you what the ancient aliens franchise always chops off at the top so you don't see it in the pictures. Very clearly. I don't have to make anything up. You know, guys, I'm all about show and tell. I don't want to tell you anything. I want to show you. And that's what I do in my Phoenix videos. And in those Phoenix videos, you can see the whole sarcophagus. And you can see that that is a Mayan stargazer. These were priests. That's what his duty was. And he is looking through an apparatus. He's not on the controls of a rocket. That's stupid. He's leaning back, looking through an apparatus up into the sky. And the sigils on the side are earthquake sigils and, and, the, and the cycle symbol. This is the end of a cycle. This is the symbol in Maya for the end of the cycle. I have it all broke down in Anunnaki homeworld. I cite the sources. I believe it was E.C. Krupp. Nobody can dispute the scholar E.C. Krupp when it comes to Central American antiquities. This is the end of a cycle. All this stuff is there, and it shows a perfect depiction of a Mayan phoenix. At the top, with flames coming down, and this Mayan stargazer looking up at what's going on. Yeah, guys, it was a phoenix. Had nothing to do with a man being launched in a rocket. Stupid. Rocket technology is dumb anyway. We lost that technology. Remember, NASA didn't even send anybody to the moon in a rocket. It was done. It's over with. <clears throat> so... I mean, it gets better than that. It gets better than that. We have uh, another, another real, real, uh, you guys know the Nazca lines in Peru. Those two are used as, as evidence of um, uh, extraterrestrials. But I have a problem with that. The problem I have with that is the fact that we have these landing platforms called Meri all throughout the Pacific Islands, all throughout Polynesia, Melanesia, Micronesia, Pacific. Pacifica, going all the way to New Zealand, into Australia, and they continue in Indonesia, Southeast Asia. They've been found in the mainland on Thailand. What the hell is Jason talking about? Well, I'm talking about flat top pyramids that have no other purpose whatsoever than something from the sky touching them and staying for a little while. This wasn't my theory, guys. I read about this in David Hatcher Childress's books when he when he was describing the thousands of 
miniature flat-topped pyramids that are found on islands that are too small to even have the stone to put these pyramids there. It's like ships built with building materials just showed up on little bitty tiny islands in the middle of nowhere, found the highest ground on the island, built, built the platform, and then left. But why? Why are these little landing pads all over the archipelago, whatever you say it, all the way across? It's because we had Veminas, and the Veminas need to power up after they've been in flight for a long period of time, and there needs to be sufficient landing spots among the islands when they're traveling over the Pacific from South America to Asia. Yeah, guys, I didn't make this up. This is very widely published in many, many of the books I just showed you and in David Hatcher Childress's summary of the Vimina aircraft and the Merai landing platforms. This is evidence of ancient aviation. It is not evidence of extraterrestrials. Again, Gobekli Tepe, Tepe, the Bajanin pyramids, stone circles and dolmens, the Meri, the obelisk. Guys, look, it just goes on and on. None of these, none of these really anomalous and unusual architecture and constructions, these megaliths, uh, uh, Puma Punka of technolithic precision, none of this is evidence of extraterrestrials at all. It's evidence of highly advanced masonry techniques that were employed in the ancient world, which is indicative of an advanced civilization in the ancient world. And this is what archaics is about. I show I show a lot of videos that show evidence of that. You can go you can go to uh, uh, you can go to beforeus.com. That's not my website, but I've endorsed it multiple times on my channel. You can go to beforeus.com and you'll see that man's got a lot of, of stuff, even stuff I don't have on my channel. But he focuses on archaeology. He, and when it comes to chronology and different floods, he and I agree. Yeah, I've talked about him before. His name escapes me right now. I can't believe I can't remember his name right now. But his website is beforeus.com. And it's fantastic. When I was in prison, I used to read his materials. He's got a fantastic book. He's got a free PDF download of his book. It's good. But uh, anyway, uh, Dead Men Don't Speak or Dead Men Don't Talk, something like that. Good book. So an another piece of evidence that's widely touted by the establishment is, uh, what is that name? I'm, I'm, I'm tortured now. I can't remember that guy's name. Because that's not cool. That's all right. Thank you, Al Martin. Jonathan Gray. Jonathan Gray is a great, great researcher, writer. Beforeus.com is really good. Uh, Dead Men Don't Talk or something is the name of the book. It's really good. His book, pack, it's packed full of good stuff. But the Ancient Aliens franchise takes these things, like, like on Jonathan Gray's site, and then turns them into these, these, these mysteries that, only, that can only be solved. It's only true. Guys, you just don't understand. This isn't even possible unless extraterrestrials came here in ancient times and built that and then left. That's crazy. Man, what's that do with the weird haircut on the Ancient Aliens franchise? Always, yeah, it's just weird, man. I'm so disenchanted with David Hatcher Childress. I have talked David Hatcher Childress up so good to you guys, and I'm really eating pro right now. I just watched two Ancient Aliens videos the other day and just... I saw him promoting it now. He's no longer being used for his information on the ancient world and discoveries. Now he's actively promoting extraterrestrial theory. Man, I'm so I'm so disgusted. Yeah, man. So the destruction of Mohenjo Daro, the destruction of Larak, the destruction of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. All these stories from the ancient world do not require extraterrestrial civilizations attacking us, but that's exactly what you find in the Ancient Aliens franchise. Every single story of the ancient world has now been retold through the lens of extraterrestrial contact. And this is very easy to do. The general public, which are, which are not critical thinkers, let me tell you something. If you watch Ancient Aliens, you, there's nothing to fault. 
I can't denigrate you. I can't say, hey, man, you can't watch Ancient Aliens. or I can't talk bad about you. But if you continue to watch Ancient Aliens after you come into contact with information like what's in Archaics or this presentation, then I would freely call you someone who is incapable of critical thinking. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you see it is all supposition. It's all tenuous. Once you see exactly what each episode is doing, putting, the, putting this guy in front of you like he's supposed to be important. He's got this really nice, eloquent voice. He's telling you things. He's got, he's got books behind him. He must know what he's talking about. And he's telling you the business and he's got credentials and he's a he's an academic or scholar. And then it flips over to this imagery of these phenomena, these things. And you're listening to this. Music. Why is every single episode packed with this dramatic, moving music? You know why? Use your heads, guys. Ancient Aliens franchise does not want you to be a critical thinker. It wants you to be a sponge. It wants you to suffer this suspension of disbelief so it can cram anything it wants to down your throat. Yeah. Bullshit. Absolute BS. So they're not the only, listen, the psyops goes deeper than that. There's many, there's many participants such as a uh, U.S. military participating, claiming that UFOs popped up on the radar and UFOs went over Washington, D.C. And yes, yeah, U.S. military. Yeah. They, they, they also contribute to the PSYOP. Everything is about keeping your awareness away from the truth where the real activity is going on. Yeah, guys. Roswell UFO crash, again, keeping you, keeping you believing things are falling from the sky. Perpetuating the myth of Area 51. Yeah. Yeah. The Area 51, there's something else going on there, but it's got nothing to do with extraterrestrials. Nothing. Whatever the U.S. government's doing to Area 51, they wanted it to be so secretive and so locked down that they could use the extraterrestrial story as a cover for heightened security to hide exactly what it is they're doing. So, yeah, it's not nothing. And every, every few years, the military declassifies some documents and some of those documents are blacked out in certain areas. And these YouTubers get online and, hey, guys, look, new declassified documents. Check it out. We knew the military was hiding something. No, you don't. All you know is the military is now releasing documents to you. And the evidence is really that there is a psyop and they're getting you to ass assume all these things. In the perpetuation of this grand lie that there is a super civilization that is existing below us. The deception is a long game. This isn't something that just they just up and come up with. No. The deceit is played out over decades of conditioning. Yeah, suspension of disbelief gets you to believe everything. Star Wars, Star Trek, Last Starfighter, E.T. Yeah, everything comes from space. It's all galaxy far, far away. When it's right under your damn feet. So <clears throat> I don't believe the people in the, in the ancient aliens franchise are stupid. Uh, you'll never you'll never hear me claim that. I don't believe Billy Carson's stupid. Yeah, I don't I don't believe anybody who promotes ancient aliens is stupid. No, no. It takes it takes a measure of intelligence to be deceitful, and it takes absolutely really no moral compass to make your living knowing you are participating in a psyop you are willingly deceiving people to make to make a living that right there is part yeah that's 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 base it's it's i don't, I don't want to talk about it you already know my opinion by the expression on my face so I have to tell you this, the unwillingness to debate this issue is evidence of the participation of a psyop, in a psyop. It is agenda-driven 
franchises. Not just ancient aliens, there's a bunch of them all promoting this disinformation. YouTube and other platforms are saturated with disinformation. Mask is truth. People claiming these OBE experiences and NDE experiences, I'm not saying NDEs aren't real. I'm not saying OBEs aren't real. But if you don't investigate the backgrounds of the individuals claiming OBEs, you'll really be deceived and think they're telling you the truth and not just imaginatively freestyling shit after they watched 100 YouTube videos. I've got specific names on my mind, but I'm going to keep from saying them right now. Yeah, guys, the shit goes deep, not just on YouTube. But we have, we have a, the Fermi, we have the unanswered, the unanswered Fermi paradox. And it's, and it's not, it's not something that's ever going to be solved because there's nothing to solve at all. So the main point of this presentation is that everything that we've discussed in archaics is, or many of the things that, that have been discussed in ancient aliens franchise history on the history channel or whatever it is, history of YouTube, whatever. None of that material is proof or even evidence of extraterrestrial intervention in human affairs. Not at all. Not at all. I'm encouraging you to go to the Ancient Aliens on the History channel on YouTube and go watch a few of those videos with a new eye. The new eye I'm telling you is, is specifically this. Pay attention to the delivery. The information's all bullshit. It's all. It's, it's all supposition. Pay attention to the delivery how the music affects you, how the imagery affects you, how they throw these people who are supposed to be experts in all this field all at you, the, the innuendos, the, th the things that they infer. Just listen to it for 10, 15 minutes and then leave a comment. Leave a comment on, on, the, on any of those, those videos you want and say, Archaic sent me here, said you're full of shit. Because you're going to see it, guys. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you understand how you're being manipulated and deceived, you can't unsee it. It's there. It's going to hit you for every single video you see. It's like, damn, they haven't shown me any proof of anything. They're really persuasive, though. Yeah, guys, the shit's real. So, got some real good videos coming up, guys, this month. I got all kinds of things. I got a. I got all kinds of things going down this month. I'm catching up. I feel that last month, 16 videos was pretty slow. Uh, yeah, I'm not cool with that. I'm telling you this video, I'm going to storm through this video. I mean, this video, I'm talking about this month, I'm going to storm through. I got some awesome videos. My friends, Steve and Chris Crimmy are coming live on my channel. I've been live with them before, but this time the spotlight's on them because we're going to be talking about one of the most archaeological, mysterious, rich areas of the entire world because they've been all over it. They've been above the ground. They've been below the ground. There's no area in the world like Turkey. There's nowhere in the world that has the archaeology that Turkey has. It's amazing. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the tepes. We're going to talk about the empty cities. We're going to talk about the buried cities. We're going to talk about the 60 underground cities. We're going to talk about Noah's Ark on Ararat. We're going to talk about all these things because the Trimmies, they've been there. And we're going to talk. That's, that that video is coming up. I, I have the Ogaijian Deluge Part 4 is also coming up. Uh, I got, I've got some podcasts coming up. I have some really amazing rock this month. I've been preparing them. And for those of you who have gotten impatient with me on Archaics TV, you got some surprises. And for those of you who have fallen in love with my Phalorn Saga, I've got 40 videos on the Phalorn Saga channel. That's my channel too on YouTube. All, all my Archaics beliefs wrapped up into a dark fantasy, epic fantasy series. Each chapter is a video. I've already got 40 videos on that channel telling the story of the Polterians in the land of Dagothar. 
It's an awesome story, guys. Everybody who's been listening to it's been saying it. But you guys have got some surprises too, because the Phalorn saga is taking off again this month with all all new additions, new episodes. Yeah, I've been waiting for the, all these meetups to be over, guys, because I got a lot of things on my plate, a lot of things. I got all these projects lined out, and I'm just going to start start taking off on them. And I will always, I will always take the time. If any of one of these guys wants to get up in my face and debate about something, I will take time out that day to bring them live on my channel, and you guys are going to get the business because I'm getting real impatient with, with all this silence. I'm going to start calling people out by name. Start calling them out by book because I'm not I'm not taking any prisoners, guys. Or it's archaics all the way. But I'm gonna go ahead and sign out with my buddy Vader. And I know Dawn's got a taco salad hidden. I, I smelt it. I, she got a taco salad out there somewhere. We're gonna, I'm gonna get to it. But yeah, Max is doing well, guys. Max is doing really good. Yeah, Schlittler, Travis, release the Kraken. I need a Kraken shirt. I need a Kraken shirt, man. But yeah, go to go to go to Ancient Aliens and tell them Archaic sent you here. He says you're full of shit. Right. Yeah, I, I will tell you this. I live my life by 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 a, a, a principal tenet. We are made by the greatness of our enemy. Yeah, it's, you don't ever attack somebody that's lower than you. You don't ever attack now. You attack the great because in doing so, you can show the public the falsity of their claims. That's what I intend to do. Yeah, I'm going to have a platform. Guys, YouTube's not it. Sooner or later, someone, someone with sufficient means is going to reach out and say, hey, man, I really like the way you've been running your mouth. And I see that there's no takers. How would you like your own documentary series? How would you like to do a, a documentary series to reach a whole bunch of people? And then listen, as long as I can talk about whatever I want to and they don't try to put their foot on my neck, I'm going to take that deal. I'm going to take that deal because I'm going to educate the public on the Phoenix phenomenon. We're going to go off. Then I'm going to educate the people on the actual true history of the Anuna and the Amuru and how we got to the how we got to where we are today. Yeah, I'm going to go off. Sooner or later, I'm going to get there, guys somebody's going to have to make a deal or I'm going to topple some castles because I'm not going to, I'm not going to yield. And I totally disagree with you guys in the chat in the past who told me to, you need to slow down, Jason. Don't worry about them. You need to keep doing what you're doing. Oh, you understand. You understand. There are too many other castles out there in my way. Yeah, they're in my way. They've got too much of an audience deceived. No, if I'm going to get the truth out, then that means I'm going to have to punish some people. I don't, have, I don't care about people's reputations, none of that. If I have to take somebody's life work and put it out before everybody for everybody to see, that's what I'm going to do. Because sooner or later, someone's going to reach down and say, hey, Jason, check this out. This is, this is what we're offering. This is what you can do. Take it or leave it. And I'm going to look at it and I'm going to judge it. I mean, if it's going to allow me to reach a lot more people with, with a positive message, then I'm going to take that deal. I'm going to do it. If not, I'm going to tell them, F you. I'm going to go about my business and I'm going to keep finding castles to topple. Yeah, guys, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on anybody's agenda but my own. And I have absolutely not one iota of a, of a trait. Uh, I don't have that self-preservation trait. I'm gung-ho for it, don't care. I told you guys two years ago, in order to shut me up, they're going to have to put a bullet in my face. That is the only way Jason Brashear will ever be quiet. And I mean that. I, I Believe me. This type of movement, when you're trying to reveal the truth about things, things that you have found to be true when others are absolutely false, listen, sometimes this type of movement requires a martyr. And I have always been one willing to take one for the team. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. If that's what it takes to make the message explode, then so be it. So be it. Now, guys, we live in a sim and we have an oversoul. And no matter what happens, if I'm inside this avatar or if I move on to another, I'm going to be all right. I promise you that. And with that, my friends, we're going to hit that. Man, I left that one chat. I left that one chat on there all the time, didn't I? Sure did. Steve Wire Paladin, Wendy Flores, all, all my moderators, I really appreciate appreciate you guys.
doing that uh doing that for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get used to this. I am. I love you guys.